Anova Technologies pioneered millimeter wave deployment in the metro back in 2011. What we found was twofold. One, the capacity wasn't there, we were limited to one gig, and two, the availability was hovering around 80 to 85 percent. The beauty of the Anova network is we are running mutually exclusive attenuating spectrums. Traditionally, free space optics could go a mile, and millimeter wave would go down when someone sneezed. By combining these into a dual spectrum system, we have a platform that stayed up and available in all weather conditions. Inherent to the AOptics platform is something called advanced wavelength diversity. And what that gives us is 99.9% .9 availability in all weather conditions. We know we have this type of availability because we're tracking it. What we've done is we have installed an airport grade weather station on top of our roof. And that sits directly next to a test link. This is what we SLA off of. The other aspect of availability is tower twist and sway. It is what it sounds like. High winds will buffet a tower up to three degrees. We've been able to compensate for this by adding a component called active beam steering. In real time, the dishes auto-rotate in a 360-degree fashion to keep the far end and the near end constantly aligned. Here's a ULL 3000 unit set up on a motion table. We're going to start out with some low-frequency movement, like wind gusting or snow and sun buildup. You will see a constant 2 gig per second data rate, error-free. Next, we move to high frequency. This would be wind buffeting or perhaps work getting done on the tower. Yet you have the same result, which is 2 gigabit per second of constant data rate coupled with an error-free transmission. So it's not just about equipment. You can have the best equipment, but if you're not deployed on the shortest path, you're not going to have the lowest latency. Our equipment actually can be deployed as close to the grade circle because we can put it on non-traditional structures. We've registered well over 5,000 links with the FCC to be able to identify all of these paths. Our software actually identifies all of the structures, traditional and non-traditional, I'll say poles, towers, buildings, rooftops, anything that has height. We've developed the ability to perform a desktop line of sight without obstructions and then it runs literally thousands of permutations to identify the shortest path as the grove flies with a clear line of sight. In the real world, you're gonna have blockages, you're gonna have things that are gonna get in the way. An example of this is we are shooting from a tower to a rooftop. So our software was running its routine on a path. It identified that it was passing a dock and in that shipping yard, there were cranes. What it ended up doing was it just clipped the edge of it so it would avoid the cranes and not be blocked. The next thing it identified was a truncheon of a bridge was in the way, so it literally just moved a little bit to avoid the blocking of the truncheon of the bridge. And then there was a rooftop that was in the way. We raised the height and the location at the end point slightly, and we were able to pass over that rooftop and have a clear line of sight with the shortest distance. With this software we developed, we're way ahead of the curve of anyone else. We have two years of experience and knowledge in deploying it, and we've been 100% successful so far. We spent an awful lot of time looking at this and figuring out ways to make our path snap to the great circle, which is the shortest distance between two points according to the curvature of the Earth. That's the most important design criteria. This is what makes us the only choice for trading firms and exchanges alike. We're pushing the limits out there because it's inherent to who we are. It's in our DNA. We may look like a carrier, but we feel an awful lot more like an engineering firm. And I think that makes us appreciate our jobs a little bit more and, and, and gives a better product set to the end users.